Hello, I'm Virginia, and welcome to Energy Matters News. Climate change minister Greg Combay has announced that the solar credit scheme will be further reduced from July 1, 2011. The scheme is based on renewable energy certificates and a multiplier system currently set at five. In December last year, the government announced a reduction from five to four to occur at the end of the financial year. This multiplier will now be further reduced to three. In 2012, the multiplier will be reduced again from three to two, and as of July 2013, no multiplier will be applied, effectively ending the solar credit scheme altogether. Green's New South Wales MP, John Kay, has raised that some households may have cause for a class action suit over the suspension of the state's feed-in tariff scheme. In late April, the New South Wales government announced applications to the solar bonus scheme had been placed on hold and no new applications would be considered. A notice in the government gazette was not published, nor had the 300 megawatt cap been reached. Dr. Kay claims that because of this, households still have legislated right to connect systems to the mains grid and receive the 20 cent tariff. Dr. Kay says that the opportunity to turn New South Wales into a leader in solar has been squandered, jobs destroyed, and investor confidence undermined. One of the major myths is that it's predominantly wealthy households which adopt solar energy. However, the Clean Energy Council has recently released figures which show the top solar postcodes. According to the Clean Energy Council's chief executive, Matthew Warren, it's a common misconception that home solar is most popular in our capital cities and exclusive suburbs. The new figures show that renewable energy is even more popular in regional Australia than it is in the city. Top suburbs listed in the report include Caloundra, Dubbo and Kelso in Townsville. A new report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says close to 80% of the world's energy could be sourced from renewables by the middle of this century. With the right policies in place, the report identifies that solar, geothermal, hydro, wind and ocean energy could help keep the increase of global temperature below 2 degrees Celsius. The panel stresses that if a price tag were put on environmental impacts, such as emissions of pollutants and greenhouse gases, renewable energy may become economically more attractive. Check the Energy Matters website for further information on any of the news items covered in this episode.